welcome to the Corning Museum of Glass. And for those of you online, welcome to the live stream. I'm Katie Hubbs. I'm going to be doing this live stream today. And I'm going to be making something similar to these. Um, I'm going to be using veil cane, which is what this is here. And Catherine can go into that uh, more in detail. And then we're going to add the neck onto the tops of these. I'm going to make two of them. One in this kind of midnight sort of um, color scheme and then one of this um, sort of brighter, sort of sunset. We'll see how the cane looks when it's finished, but something like that. Um, I'd like to introduce my team helping me today. We have Helen Tegler over here, Chris Rochelle over here, Catherine Ayers is going to be mostly chatting with you all. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask her. And me, I'm going to have the microphone on as well. Um, and this is being live streamed, so hello and welcome everyone online. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so yeah, they will be able to ask you all online, will be able to ask questions. So, all right, I'm going to start, and we're going to start by rolling up some cane. Um, and I already have the neck pre-made for this. I'm going to make two during this demonstration, so I really kind of wanted to be ultra-prepared and, and not run out of time. So I made one, I put it into the garage. That's where it's uh, being kept. Pink one first. Huh? Pink one first. Pink one first. Oh, let me, I'll go ahead and grab that. Chris, do you want to grab that? Yeah, um, I think it's on the, it's in the middle. Right up in there. <laughs> and uh, Chris is going to run this over. This is in a kiln at 900 degrees. Just to keep it a little bit warmer, the canes I pulled are a little thicker um, than I guess some traditional style canes. Uh, that's because I'll make a little bit of a larger piece with it. And the color, for, especially for veil cane, can kind of bleed out sometimes. And so. I wanted to make them a little bit thicker. Um, hang out for a second. Hello, let me come back. Yep, thank you. All right. So we'll get this hot. I'm going to make a collar and then I'm going to roll that up. And so, whenever uh, Catherine is ready, no rush, but we'll get this going. Right. How about a big round of applause for Katie? We'll pump her up for the big live stream. Glad all of you could join us here at the museum. I'm glad all of you can join us on the internet as well as we are live streaming. Katie's mom is watching. She watches every uh, every Wednesday. Can we get a this round of one? applause for my mom? Yeah, let's go. Hey! And my dad. <laughs> oh, is your dad watching too? Yes, that we always watches too. We never too. shout out to your dad. But yeah, shout out. And they're back in, the, where are they, Katie? They are in Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas City, Missouri. Yes, so hello. Nice and warm there. It's pretty warm nice. here, but. It's nice that we started doing these live streams because our family from all over the world can watch us. And even those who can't make it to the museum, even though they might be uh, here, can also watch as well. And you, when you go home, and next week you're looking for something to do on Wednesday at 10 to 12, you can also tune in. Or if you can't tune in, 10 to 12, we'll post these videos on our museum's YouTube and you can watch them anytime you want. So we've been enjoying doing these live streams. So as Katie was saying, this is a, what we call a cane roll up. And Helen and Chris are heating these canes up so they're they will stick together. I don't know if you know this, but when glass is hot, it is very sticky. It will stick to anything else that is hot. So Katie warmed up a blowpipe so that the glass would stick to it so she could make the collar, which is the little bit of glass on the end of a blowpipe that the glass canes will stick to. Chris and Helen are getting those canes to um, push together so that they stick together and then she can roll them up. 
Katie's gonna pop a little hole in the end of this blowpipe so that it is still a blowpipe and it will be an open tube for her to blow through, but it has that little bit of glass on the outside that she can roll this up. the last couple of weeks pulling all these canes. So she, she's a sweetie, made some color cups so that the color is very wide. Called this veil cane. There's all sorts of canes. Um, your basic filigrana cane, which is colored down the middle and a lot of clear on the outside, which is pretty traditional. We've got Zemphirical cane, which if you take you know, a, a several of those filigrana cane, and pick them up on the inside of some clear glass, and then as you pull it, you twist it. It creates like a double helix kind of pattern. You pick them up the lines on the outside and twist it. So it's kind of like the veil cane. And then you, or you can pick the color up on the outside of the cane, like Katie has, and create these wider. Once they flatten out, it's going to create these wider strips of color. So they keep flipping this um, plate around. Because of the heat in the oven. First thing in the oven is the last thing out. It's always gonna be the hottest part of the piece. So they are heating both sides of this nice and even so that when she rolls it up, one side is not hotter than the other. Um, Katie used a pi divider. If you're familiar with the mathematical uh, concept of pi, this is a pi divider. So this is one of those times where pi comes in useful. It's not just a number you memorize. So what this measurement here is the length of whatever she's rolling up. This measurement here will give her the diameter of the the round part that she needs to roll up. So this would be that. Um, Any concern about that metal? The length divided by the 3.14 gives her this um, dimension. I'm just going to put this in the video so you can see. For those of you at home, this is our pi divider. I don't know if you can see the other end. So we measured the length, and then this measurement here will give her the diameter of the, the um, collar she needs. So it's a pretty fun tool and a practical application for pie. Alright, Helen's going to get the perfect heat on those canes. Katie's going to stick the collar and start to roll this up. Look at that. Isn't that cool? She'll brush off any dust. There's a little bit of kiln wash on that plate so that the, gla uh, the glass canes don't stick to them. So she just used a, a, a whisk broom to uh, dust it off. She's going to use this Dremel tool. <clears throat> you want an extension? You got a yoke? Bring a yoke over.
Katie's going to use this Dremel tool to scrape off any kiln wash that might be on there. We're just cleaning up those canes. We got a little metal stuff there. A little metal from the, there was these little metal things you know holding the canes from rolling off the plate. And sometimes little flakes of metal okay. stick to the glass as well. So she's just kind of scraping that off before she rolls this right up. It is on the edge that she's going to stick them together, so before she sticks them together, she does have to clean that metal off. When she goes back into the heat, the flame will fire polish that sanded edge. So I'll never even know that this happens, but it is something we need to take care of now. So here we go. She's going to start to pull the two edges together. glass cools very quickly, so she does have a very limited amount of time to get this to stick. So you're going to see her going back and forth from the bend to that reheating oven quite often throughout the process. So we want you to learn as much about Katie, as much of this process and this material as you would like today. So if you have any questions, let us know. You can shout them out. You can type them in. Amanda is at the computer. Uh, following the comments at home. And so let us know. How many of you have seen glass blowing before? Only a couple of you. Cool. All right. Well, this is a very... Um, complicated te technique and process, and so um, you're getting a, yeah? Oh yeah, so she was shielding Katie's um, hand from the heat, so she used using this um, wooden board uh, just to kind of shield uh, Katie's hands from the heat. It's really hard to get a lot of work done in a short period of time if your hand is on fire. Not on fire, but like so hot that you can't focus. It's a distracting pain. And so she just, yeah, there she is again, holding that board in between the hot glass and Katie's hand, which is really close to the hot glass. Wearing gloves um, would be hard to use the tools, it would be like trying to type an email or play the guitar with gloves on, and so sometimes it's easier just to have someone, if you've got extra help, which Helen and um, Chris here are, are on standby, they're going to jump into the process a lot later in the process, but for right now, part of their job is just keep, keeping Katie comfortable, making sure her hand's not too hot and all that. How did Katie learn glass blowing? Katie, you want to answer this one or you want me to? Yeah. Okay. I, um, I went to school, I went to college, and I went to Emporia State University, and I uh, took about, I think, three years in glass making there. And I got a degree in glass making there. Did you always know you wanted to be a glass maker? <laughs> no. Um, I went to Emporia State to be a uh, printmaking and an engraving um, uh, graduate, but I found glass instead. I still love those those mediums of art a whole lot, but glass is just I think matched me a little bit better. So I switched. I found the hot shop one day, and I uh, thought it was really amazing and thought I was never going to do this, and some friends convinced me to do it, I was too scared. Um, but then I did it eventually, and, and uh, I'm glad I did. I'm really glad I did. 
So yeah. So, Katie, you, you made a pink a pink bottle and a blue bottle, and do you notice a difference between using the pink color and the blue color? Is one softer than the other? It helps a lot, really. Huh? You made a pink bottle and a blue bottle. Did you notice any difference between the two colors? Is one softer than the other? Yeah, I kind of like this color, but I also wanted to make one with a different color blues. Um, I was thinking about my mother, of course, when I did that. <laughs> She's gonna love that one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, I just kind of wanted two different contrasts. Since I wanted to make two pieces, these kind of go pretty quick. So instead, sorry, Helen, I just wanted to make two, and then of course, a little bit more contrast is nice. Yeah, so all the, um, all the different colors in glass, they kind of react to the heat a little differently, depending on, I think, how much metal oxides are added, or um, sometimes it's just reflection. Um, it's kind of like wearing a black t-shirt or a white t-shirt on a sunny day. The white t-shirt's going to reflect the heat, and you won't feel as hot, whereas the black t-shirt will absorb all the heat, and it'll feel a lot hotter. So, you know, the darker colors and the lighter opaque colors tend to reflect the heat, whereas the darker colors absorb the heat, they become hotter and softer quicker. And so sometimes working with, like I love, you know, black and white stripes, but black and white stripes are really hard to work with in glass because black is so soft and white is so stiff. But color companies, there's a handful of color companies and they've started to make like a stiff black and a soft white so that um, when you're blowing these objects that have these different colors in them, like if you had, even a penguin is, is difficult to make because you have like all the black and then the, just the white belly. So the, the soft black color wants to blow out more than the white belly. And so you kind of have to either put something behind them both that is an equalizer or maybe use a stiff black and a soft white. So it all, there's, there's tricks, but yes, you definitely have to. And like this dark teal, that is a very soft color. So if you put that with like a, an orange, which is stiffer, and sometimes the only way you can tell is to, to try and then you have to figure something else out. But there's definitely tricks to, to uh, work with um, colors that heat up differently. But yes, that can be something we have to think about and plan for because they do react differently to the heat. The color companies have um, started making something called Duro. So with these canes, you're pulling, you know, the glass, sometimes you stretch the color really thin and it can kind of fade away once, so you pull the cane, you stretch it thin, and then you pick it up, you do a roll up, and then you stretch it thinner, and sometimes your lines will disappear. And they've started making a color called Duro, and it's a really strong, bold um, form of color, and so it's really nice to use for the canes, because once you stretch it real thin, and then blow it out, it still holds that really strong, line design. And so if you wanted to make that filigrana or like a reticello, something with complicated lines, you would want to use that duro color instead of just the basic color. That way you could keep your crisp lines and they wouldn't kind of bleed out. And there's hundreds of hundreds of um, colors to choose from. It's like going to the paint store. You know, they make every color you could think of, any transparent, opaques. And we buy our color from a company called Reichenbach, based out of Germany. They've been making the color for hundreds of years. 
they make sure that it's all compatible, it's uh, consistent, so we can buy the gold ruby, which is this nice um, pink color. We could buy that last year, buy another rod of it next year, and it's gonna be consistent in color because they've got it perfected, so. But different metals, so I call this a gold ruby, different metals are what create the different colors in glass. Gold makes a ruby red, iron makes green, manganese makes purple. Cobalt makes a dark blue, copper makes a light blue. And so, pretty much anything on the periodic table of elements are what creates different colors. So as we were talking about that, Katie closed off the end of the bubble. So now she's got it on that blowpipe, it's closed off, now she can blow and inflate. She can make a vessel or anything like this now. So what you're seeing there, the tip of that bubble is going to come to the bottom of the vessel. So you, can, you might recognize where all those canes come together. Of course, we have our camera view, which you can see as she's reheating. That camera sits right behind the oven. And looks through a little window of a special type of glass called fused silica. It was developed here in Corning in the 1930s. It has a high melting temperature of over 3,000 degrees. It won't melt in the back of that oven. It won't melt as the shuttle re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. does allow us to see what Katie's got going on inside the reheating oven. We're using a brand new newspaper. That's why it's so smoky. chatting we had a question to make a yellow color um, we were saying a silver would make like a nice gold color if you were looking for like a opaque yellow or orange you would have maybe cadmium or selenium I think I talk, for those of you who watch our live stream consistently, this will be a bit repetitive, but for those of you who have never heard it, it's kind of interesting. Um, what's that? Okay, mom says it's looking good. Great, Mama hugs. Thank you. Is anyone familiar with Vaseline glass? A, it was sort of like a limey green, kind of like that one down there on the end, maybe a, a little bit brighter. And it's found in a lot of antique stores they used to make it. And to make that uh, bright green color, they used to use uranium. So it's actually, it'll read on the scale. It's a little bit radioactive. It glows under a black light. They don't make it anymore. They have, they found a way to make the same color without using uranium. But, um, yeah, they used to use yeah, arsenic and lots of different things to really to make colors, but there's a lot more regulations nowadays. And they found different ways to make that beautiful bright green without creating radioactive glass. But if you go into an antique shop and you see something like that, they'll usually, um, they probably usually have a black light there to, to show you that it is um, that vessel. Yeah. These, ba these boxes on the side are slow cooling ovens. <laughs> and so we can only make um, enough pieces that we can cool slowly overnight. And so you might be wondering, well, like, I doubt you could make that many pieces. You've got all these ovens. Like, why do you need all these ovens? We've got these bigger ovens. 
once you fill the oven, um, depending on the thickness of the size of the glass, the thickness and the size of the glass that you make, some glass has to cool slowly for like three or four days. Um, really thick glass might take months. And so when we built this shop, we were kind of considering that we would have guest artists coming in. And they would do like a residency. So a guest artist would come in from you know, Seattle or wherever they were coming from. They'd stay for the whole week. And so they'd be making their work for a week. And if we only had one big annealing oven and all that work needed to slowly cool for three or four days, then they couldn't work the whole week. So we have all these huge ovens. So like say like a, a glass artist came in, they wanted to make really big work and they would fill one of these ovens during the day, we'd have to shut it off and we couldn't open it for about three or four days. We could fill this one, we could fill that one. There's probably... And then say we had to do shows when they left, for three or four days, we could use our smaller ones. Like we'll fill one of these smaller ones up in a day. This one is one from yesterday, we can't use that one, so now we've got a spare here, we've got two over there. So we're just prepared for, we're prepared for everything. Slow cooling of it, we got lots of, they're called annealing ovens. So the glass goes in for a, a slow cooling annealing process. So right now, I think the, the one that's on is the one on top over there. This one from yesterday is around 600 still. This one's coming down slowly. What do we have? Oh yeah, we have some big thick pieces in there. So we turned that one off at five and it's still at 600. So it's coming down a little slower because it's got some thicker glass in it. These pieces that Katie are making, they're pretty standard thickness. They're not gonna be real thick and they're not real big. so. About 12 hours, 16 hours is going to be perfect for these ones. But the annealing cycle is based on the thickest piece of the oven. So. a question this is just a statement one of our viewers says I'm 53 and I want to be like Katie when I grow up or be Katie yeah I want to be you when they grow up yeah it's fun the hard part is Katie's been practicing for eight or so years so See this process and you're like, oh, I want to, you know, pull a cane and make a cane vessel. And unfortunately, it, sometimes it takes years just to get to that point to be able to work with the canes. If you take like a, a beginner glass making class, you're going to spend a few hours just learning how to gather, which believe it or not is pretty difficult. some of the tools so they, they usually start you off with like a paperweight so you can learn how to use the blocks, the jacks, the tweezers, the shears. Why not? And then maybe the next step would be making a tumbler or a cup so then you got to learn how to start a bubble. Starting a bubble in the glass is pretty difficult. Bubbles should go in nice and even and so it's one of the more difficult parts of this process. Once you have your fundamentals, then you can start trying to make something from that. And that is um, something that takes years. If you were to take a traditional apprenticeship, like the, the apprenticeship here in the old Stuben factory, this is the old Stuben factory, and they close, they still make a limited production, but it's um, on a much smaller scale. But when they were open, they had an apprenticeship program, which was six years or about 12,000 hours. So. Quite a while to learn. It's like an instrument or a sport. You can't learn it overnight, you can't learn it in a weekend. Drink water. But you can get a good start. Oh, 
hard part about glass blowing is you take a class and you don't usually get to go home and practice. <laughs> Unless you're lucky enough to have a hot shop at home. If you have uh, a bowl of honey or hot fudge at home, you can take like a chopstick and gather the honey or the hot fudge on the end of the stick. It's kind of like what it's like, what she did there, kind of like that gathering process. And as long as you keep that little stick turning, you can keep the material on the end of the pipe nice and even. That's why you can see her left hand is keeping this pipe turning so evenly. And that takes years as well. Beginners tend to like frantically roll back and forth and then their bubble gets off. And, um, so you can see Katie's using the rail. She's rolling and rolling and rolling, like all making full rotations, which is important when you're making something symmetrical and round. But it is very difficult. I bet, Casey, I bet Katie uh, roasts a really even part. Turning it nice and even. I think I was at a campfire with my brother and he was like, Catherine, you don't have to turn that so even. So I guess I do. I can't. I can't not turn it on even. It's a grain. <laughs> he was kind of flipping his. It's like, it, it, glass blowing is like roasting a marshmallow. If you roast one side, it starts to kind of sag and fall off and get too hot on one side. And so she's she's turning the whole time. Even when she's in the oven, she's turning and turning and making sure that heat is getting all the way around, making sure that the glass doesn't fall off center. What she's doing here with this newspaper, she's not only shaping it, but it's cooling it. If she shapes and cools one side, it's going to get hot on the other side and blow out uneven. So to get this to blow out and to keep the walls uniform thickness, she's got to make sure she touches that glass evenly on all sides. Now because we're using this brand new newspaper, Helen is holding this um, compressed air to blow the smoke away so it's not going right in Katie's face. It is the one tool that we have to replace often. Here's the old one, the one she was using yesterday. You can see the paper does not burn through. We don't replace it often because the paper burns through. We replace it often because it becomes soggy. It starts to fall apart. So this one is a little thin, a little flimsy. I just made a new one yesterday. But once it builds up that carbon layer, it doesn't smoke as much. So it looks like they're kind of just staring at this glass. But they're, let <laughs> they're letting it cool off. They're letting it cool off, but it does give them a good chance to kind of check out that beautiful cane pattern. So how many colors do you have there, Katie? I have four colors. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a, um, I call it mauve, but it's uh, aubergine. And I really like it. It's plum, but it turns out it's a little brownish. So I'm trying really hard not to blow this out too much to uh, lessen that color intensity. That's what's the brown color in the, the pink vessel over there. It happens, you know. Um, just gotta be careful. But yeah, and then we've got uh, flamingo, another really great color. Noble pink, and then vanilla. Is there four in this one or just three? There's four in that one, yeah. The flamingo in that. You know, opal look very similar. Oh, yeah. There's a difference there. Slight, slight. Slight difference. Blue has four as well. One being iris night blue, just one of my favorite colors. Why not put your favorite color in? Yeah, I think that's going to be very good. So when did you start making these pieces? Um, I actually started this last year. Um, I wanted to make a piece for 
gallery opening in Emporia, Kansas, where I went to school, and I made a piece. And it made it, believe it or not. And uh, I made another piece, too, just like it. Um, and then, uh, those were pretty cool. But I've been working with Baokane for about four years, four or five years. Open. can see that glass moves just like honey. I could tell you it would drip off the pipe all day long, but until you see that right there, you can see the bucket of water is even glowing, steaming and oh, boiling. It's it's all right. She's going to remove maybe a little bit of something that was in there. Just kind of pulled it out, keep the glass nice and clean. And then she's using a wooden scoop tool called a block. These blocks are carved out of a block of cherry wood. You can use fruit, any fruit woods, cherry wood, apple wood, pear wood. I guess it would just depend on what was um, available to the tool maker, which, to, which wood they would use. I think the Italians use a lot of pear wood. We, our tools tend to be cherry wood. But we're looking for that dense grain pattern so that the wood burns away nice and even. We don't want an irregular grain pattern because it would catch in the glass. Split. And a low resin content. Helen's just heating up the jacks and putting a little bit of beeswax on them. As metal heats up, it wants to stick to the glass, and so if those um, blades don't have a little bit of lubrication on them, they tend to want to kind of create a resistance in the glass, and what you would, um, she would feel the resistance, but we would hear like a screeching sound, kind of like nails on a chalkboard. But mostly it would be for, so she didn't have this resistance on the glass, it would be hard for her to turn. So I think because they've got those jacks out and they're not waiting for this glass to cool off, they're going to start making the, sh the, the shape of the vessel. So they've got all the glass they need. So she's going to start to shape this up. Cool off the tip and the newspaper. And they've even got the blow hose. So when we reopened the museum, There was the mask requirement, of course, and so we wouldn't be able to blow glass the way we used to, by holding the pipe up to our mouth and blowing through the end of it, nor did we want to. Um, you know, in a pandemic, you don't really want to put your mouth on anything that 12 other people have touched recently. So even though we do sanitize and clean the pipes, it's nice that we don't have to use our mouths to blow. We can use this new system. So it is a, it's just a blow hose hooked up to the end of the pipe, hooked up to some compressed air, and she's got a foot pedal down um, by her feet when she sits at the bench, and she can step on that foot pedal. And the technicians that designed this are both glass makers, and so they know the um, right amount of pressure. They knew that if the valve, just if when she let off the foot pedal, if she, uh, if it closed a valve, the heat would still expand in the hot glass, and so the valve it shuts off the air, but it also leaves any um, open space so the air doesn't keep expanding, which is really nice. So they made this system so that it would function just like if you were blowing the end of the pipe. So if you blow through the end of the pipe, you take your mouth off the pipe, the pipe is open. There's no valve in there that holds any air in. So he wanted to make sure, they wanted to make sure that um, that when we stopped blowing, even though the hose is attached, the air can go in and out of the pipe and it doesn't keep inflating. And so it's a really nice system. 
How do you like the new system, Katie? It's good for some stuff. Yeah, there's some things where we, this one first. we prefer just to blow through the end of the pipe and not have to worry about the hose. But for the time being, this is a nice, a nice overview shot of all this teamwork. Chris is helping Katie turn the pipe. Katie's really cranking down on that line, yeah, right, pulling and stretching out that nice gourd okay. shape. Helen is shielding her hand and arm from the heat. And so it's always nice to have a nice big team. Okay, let's get start. Um, actually, yes, I agree. Um, let's get another heat and then we'll blow this out. Here's a really good question, Katie. Please. Yeah? Someone wants to know what your favorite glass blowing story is. Oh. <laughs> and you can think about this, and I know this is like, you're right now you're kind of right in the middle of things and uh -huh. things are really starting to happen right now, so if you wanted to like put that on pause and answer later, that's totally fine. I have, uh, yeah, I'll think about that. I think there's gonna be some time I can work on that one later. Yeah, great question. Thank you for asking. Glass floors have lots of stories. And I'm gonna turn for you, Chris. You know, once you, you add fire, back, and heat, and gooey material, and then all the different personalities back. on the team, sometimes glass makers have really good stories. Okay, um, get this a little hotter, pump that up. Don't get that line really far down. up some more, they're going to cut in a jack line. I have a story about when I first started blowing glass um, and how important um, language is in the shop. <laughs> so I was, you know, you're, you're first learning how to blow glass and the heat is intimidating and the glass is intimidating and you got to keep it turning, you got, there's so much to think about. And um, before this whole automated system, if you were to, if you wanted to tool the glass and inflate it as you're shaping it, you could have someone sit at the end of the pipe and blow. And so then you would have to verbally say, blow, blow soft, blow harder, or stop blowing. And so I was um, gaffing or sitting at the bench and I was in charge, like Katie is right now. You could kind of hear her telling Chris, um, Helen different things to kind of get what she, what she needs. And so I wanted um, my assistant to start blowing. And so I said, blow, blow, blow. Nothing was happening. So I said, keep blowing, blow, blow. And then all of a sudden, I don't know what happened if the bubble just came out or if it was too hot and, or he started blowing really hard. But I started saying, whoa, 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 and whoa, whoa, whoa. Sounds like blow, blow, blow. And the bubble got so big and it was like, it all happened in seconds and I said, I gotta say stop blowing or something like something else and I can't say whoa because it sounds an awful lot like blow. So I learned that lesson. Usually that's how you learn things in the hot shop is you learn them the hard way. By making mistakes. Make sure that the floor is clean because if you step on hot glass, uh, you don't want to like just stand and then all of a sudden you start smelling. First thing you start uh, smelling is burnt rubber and then you look around to see what's burning and then you realize it's the bottom of your shoe. So, yeah. I worked in a hot shop that was in an old barn. I learned very quickly that you couldn't really cut scraps off and if you did, you had to figure out where they went because the floor was made of wood. And yeah, that was not good. So if you cut something off and it didn't land in the tray, you'd have to make sure you found it real quick. Is 
Has anyone seen the show Blown Away? No? Oh, you guys have. Good. There's a, a glass blowing reality show on Netflix. So if you, if you get hooked on glass blowing today, you'll really enjoy this. Um, it's a competition reality show about glass blowing. You can get some uh, good ideas of all the different personalities there are in the glass world. <laughs> And they're on their second season. Our team, we do demonstrations for the museum. Our team is, you know, pretty mellow. But glass, sometimes it needs to happen so immediate, and there's a lot of has to happen at the right time, the right temperature, and things can get pretty heated pretty quickly in a hot shop, in more way than one. And if Katie had eight, if they're going to punty this, they're going to transfer it off the blowpipe, so she's going to add a few drops of cold water. They stuck that punty on there, a light tap. Pops right off. How about a big round of applause for a nice, clean break? So let's say we had eight other benches in here. And Katie had to make this piece, and it had to, you know, it was going to be judged by a panel, and she only had two hours to make this piece. I could tell you the tensions would be high. Let's say she only, she, I mean, in the competition, they only get one assistant, so you can see Katie's got. Chris and Helen here helping her out. And so things would get a lot more um, stressful, maybe you'd say. There'd be a lot more pressure if this was a competition and less people um, helping you. But she's got a lot of help. Everything's going to be really cool, calm, and relaxed for the most part, unless things start to go terribly wrong. <laughs> things go terribly wrong, the good news is Katie doesn't go home. She gets to come back tomorrow. Do it nobody's all over again. Yeah, nobody's going to send you home if things go terribly wrong. We'll just chalk it up to it makes a good demonstration. You get to see what can Absolutely. go terribly wrong. But in a competition, if things go terribly wrong, you get the... You have to go home. It happens. Yeah. So she's got this flipped around. She's going to work on the top now. Now you're going to add... The, yeah, neck. the neck. And an I'm going to trim process. a significant amount of glass off of this for a couple of reasons. The shape, and then I picked up some um, scuzz. I do think it is from the plate that we were using. It happened yesterday, so we're not going to use that plate again. But uh, it'll also help with this shape, help puff it up a little bit. She's going to create another one of these constriction lines that will allow her to remove that inch off the top. She could cut it. She could break it. I don't know what she's going to do. What are you going to do, Katie? I'm going to break it. Okay. So to break it, she's going to squeeze it down and then cool. she's cooling it right now with those shears. But by using those shears, she's also squeezing and cooling, so she's getting two things done at one time. Go for it. And Kate, Helen's gonna tap it off. Sometimes if it's a little still gooey, she can cool the inside with the jacks. So right now she's taking that cold metal and cooling off the inside. Cools it again on the outside, a light tap. Tap. We don't hit it harder. I don't know if you noticed that. We don't go get the persuader. And Try to force it off. I mean, give it a quick heat. Let everything else heat back up. And Helen will tap on it lightly again until it just pops right off. And it will. It's just a little warm still. She'll cool it off. She'll use a different set of shears because those ones are warm now. Okay. So maybe the cooler shears. 
now. It doesn't want to come off, does it? Don't worry, it will. Cooling it, cooling it some more. Another quick flash. Katie, if you weren't live streaming, this would pop right off. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it would. <laughs> Yeah, that's the kind of age-old thing. The demo piece is never, never the best piece. Yep. But uh, here we are. Try your best. Third time is a charm. Helen, just give it a good old whack. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. Yeah, you can give her a round of applause. Tiny hole. Tiny hole. I'm sure she feels a nice little sense of relief. I'm going to open that up. I might actually trim some with the shears because it's pretty small with that palm water mat. I think the other hard part about doing a live demonstration as you're doing something really difficult is having someone on a microphone telling everyone that's watching just how difficult it mm -hmm. is and how things can go terribly wrong. So that's always fun to have that, you know, narration in your ear as you're trying something really difficult or risky. <laughs> but she knows, so she it probably doesn't bother her. It might bother her. Mm -hmm. um, everything's going to look pretty smooth here today and go really well. Um, if you watch the, the show on Netflix, um, Katie and Helen have been working together for the past couple of years or so. Same with uh, Chris. We've all been working together for a couple of years now, Katie joined our team. Um, yeah, I can't sure. remember if it was two or three summers Go ahead ago. And that up. I, think, I think this will be her third summer. Will this be her third summer? Huh? Will this be her third year here? Yeah. Yeah. 2019, I hired on. Yeah, so March. we're all pretty familiar. We know how um, each other work, how, how we like things, and how things get done. Um, it's fun to watch that competition reality show because they get they get given an assistant that they've never worked with before in a shop they've never worked before. So I don't know if you've ever cooked in someone else's kitchen. You have no idea where anything is. You have no idea that when you turn the oven into high that it's actually like a medium high. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> We're good. Pressure. Yes, it is. It's really high pressure. <laughs> she was just puffing it up did. the that top totally there. weird. It must have closed again. Sorry, y'all. That was loud. You guys okay? <laughs> She's puffing up the top, so she got it nice and hot and used that little bit of that compressed air. That was hot. It's fine now. Okay. Just going to flatten that out here. I'll take this one. But you'll see a lot more breaking. Um, like I said, Katie's been working in this shop for about three years. She's been working with the team for about three years. Everything's going to go pretty smooth. But if you're thrown into a new shop with a new assistant, a lot of things can Chris, we're ready for that. So it is fun to get a, a different perspective if you watch that show. But I think people are very confused when they watch the show and then they come here and they said, how come no one's screaming, running, and there's no glass breaking? But like I said, different shop, different competition levels, stress levels are high and all that. So we like to do a demonstration. Um, Nice relaxed demonstration, but not a lot of pressure. You feeling the pressure? No. 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 That like, you know, beginning of demonstration. It's a little nerve wracking, but now you're just going with the flow? Yeah. Now you're just going relaxed. Yeah. So we're gonna combo this on. I'm gonna start to heat this up and Chris is gonna heat the neck of this up and we're going to put the two together. So she's going to do a, a process called a combo. Stay here. Actually, take a quick heat. We're just going to join two bubbles together. So what this allows her to do is keep pattern on one half and a solid color on the neck. So the only way to get that solid color on the neck with a really crisp line and the the line um, cane pattern on the bottom half of the piece is to join two bubbles together. So she made a neck earlier, which is a tube of glass, and it's a nice salmon pink. 
This is an example of an Encalmo piece, as we call this, an Encalmo platter. This was made by one of our glassmakers, G. Brian. You can find that live stream on our museum's YouTube channel, how he made this marble. Carl Siglid made this one, so you can see half the bubble is purple, half the bubble is marble. So they both did an Encalmo technique, but they did it a little differently. And Katie's actually doing the same thing without the marble, but showing another way to use this Encalmo technique. But it allows you to get the the pattern color and then the solid color in one piece with a crisp line. Now that you've seen that, you can see what pieces might be the Encalmo technique, like this bowl here. All right. Yesterday, she was nailing these connections. You're sticking them right on center. Let's we'll see how she does today. So Chris got the edge of that nice and hot. She's going to stick it right on there. And as she turns, we'll see she got it right on center. Nailed it again. How about a big round of applause? Yep. <laughs> I was a little worried there at first. It was kind of going, you know, I saw a little, all, a lot of this happening, but she, it kind of goes like, uh, hesitation. A little hesitation. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier. Jeff was like, man, you nailed it. <laughs> and then Helen was like, that was really good. Let's do it again. <laughs> and here we are today. Um, try not to think about how you're we talking about nailing. I'm going to take it, you know, yeah. It's an okay connection, but I think we're going to um, heat that up a little bit here. Thank you. Yeah. So you can see she's pretty close to being done. She's going to just kind of open up the top of that, make sure the shape is how she wants it. Right now the hole is still pretty small. She'll open that up. She might trim the edge, make sure it's nice and straight. But we're really close to being almost finished with this beautiful vessel. the shoulders. The tricky part is she's got to keep everything hot so she has to go into the oven and heat everything but she doesn't want at, like certain spots to get too hot. So sometimes we do have to cool the glass off a little bit to make sure that they don't move as much when she goes back to the reheat. That punty she has to keep warm. If that gets too cold that's the only thing holding this beautiful vessel on the pipe. So if that punty gets too cold, it will crack and break. And so she's, you can see she uses the torch on the top when she wants to get the top, but she's gotta make sure that she keeps that. There's so many I'm things. I'm gonna open it. This is the most frustrating material you'll ever work with, but it's probably also the most rewarding. There's, you know, you don't just have to worry about making this shape, you have to worry about keeping the glass warm, all the glass warm. You have to worry about not touching the hot part of the pipe, not touching the hot part of the tool not setting the pipe down too hard on the rail. Lots of things to think about. Turning the pipe with your left hand, shaping the glass with your right hand. And now we've added this new system where we step on the foot pedal to inflate the glass. And so, a lot to think about. Still doing all right on questions? Anytime we touch the glass with any of the metal tools, it does pull a lot of heat from the glass. And um, I would say, I think the question was um, like how many degrees, roughly. Um, I would say, I don't, I'm not really sure, but it does cool really quickly. Um, So 
I've got this really hot, like gooey glass that will drip. It's really hot and gooey right now. But if I take this cold metal paddle and squeeze it against the table, within seconds it's already cooled off. So it, it does pull quite a bit of heat. I don't, I'm not sure how much. In this case, I would say at least 500 or 1,000 because it's already hard. So it does cool it off quite a bit. Uh, hold on, let me get rid of this. Say it again. Yep. No, it, the stainless steel is a fairly poor conductor, so the when you um, cool it with the blades, the handle doesn't get too hot. You're, most likely your arm gets a little hotter than that. The metal, yeah. That's why we like the stainless steel because it is a poor conductor of heat. But even if you just get near it with a cold tool, the glass can, it'll suck a lot of the heat. Check it out. So um, blowing on it will cool it off. I was watching a demonstration with some other people, um, and I was a trained glassmaker, and I knew what the process was, and the people I was watching with didn't know I was a glassmaker. And they were sticking on that punty, that temporary connection on the bottom, and the glassmaker, ma before he stuck the punty on, he blew on it, just to try to cool it off just a little bit. And the lady that was sitting next to me, she goes, look at him, he's blowing on it, like that's gonna do anything, this glass is so hot. Like, blowing on it's gonna do anything. He's making the cup, he's opening up the cup and the punty popped off. And I said, oh, you shouldn't have blown on it so much. Because I, <laughs> I knew, like, well, it was a little cold when I stuck on it, I shouldn't have, he blew on it too hard. But, there's all these little things, the temperatures have to be just right. If they've finished, Katie's finished with this bottle, it's a beautiful bottle, I think you're going to be surprised how easily this pops off and how easily it could have popped off if she set it down too hard or bumped the back of the rail on something, the pipe on something. Right now she's just adding a little heat because she is going to add water to the connection and if like just a little bit of water not even, water you probably couldn't even see, like a, a mist of water hits the bottom, it could crack the whole piece. Like I said, if we get near it with cold, anything cold or even warm water could cause it to crack at this point. Yep. All right, so Chris has got the silver suit on. He's gonna carry this piece into this slow cooling oven. Watch this, the lightest tap. She's just adding water to the punty, not the piece, with a light tap. See, now that I've said that, it's not going to See the crack? Ooh. So something was just a little off. Put this away into our slow cooling oven to cool slowly overnight. A beautiful piece that's Katie Hubs, everyone. Awesome. And now she's gonna start right up on another one. Any questions? things around she's gonna make a similar piece but in some cooler tones so a nice blue color I think she's got in there if you missed the first part of the demonstration she's gonna do the cane roll up which is gonna give us those beautiful striping pattern and uh, you're welcome to come and go and switch things up thanks for coming in today or you're welcome to stick around
All right, so we're going to start up on another piece. This is Katie Hubbs, and she is the artist for this demonstration. We call this a demonstration. Bring the heat. So Katie's going to bring the heat for us this morning. And she is one of our gaffers here at the museum and is an artist who works in glass. And she's been making these beautiful bottles that you can see up here on the Marver with some cane patterns and some um, solid transparent necks. And so she's, she just finished a beautiful um, warm toned ruby or pink colored vase. And now she's gonna do the cooler toned, which is a nice blue color. So there is some of the, um, she just made one just like this, but with a salmon pink top. And then the next one's gonna be this beautiful blue color. And so right now, are you making the neck? So right now she's making the neck. So she's got a little clear bubble and then she's applying a little bit of a dark blue, maybe. I'm not really sure what color she's got there. Aquamarina. So she's got a beautiful aquamarine. Helen said 47. If you go to the catalog, you can find aquamarine, which is R47. A beautiful color. We're live streaming, so those of you who are here at the museum, you're watching live, but we also are live streaming on the YouTube and Facebook. So. Um, Welcome to those of you watching virtually as well. We live stream every Wednesday from 10 to 12, and we're going to continue that through the summer. Um, we alternate with Bring the Heat and You Design It, We Make It. And then this summer, we're going to do, be doing some programming that um, artists, some of our artists, are, our team are going to be inspired by one of the changing exhibits this summer and we'll be making some pieces that are inspired by the exhibit in Sparkling Company. So um, that will be a nice, a nice demo that will go with our new exhibit opening this spring. And then the You Design It, we make it every other Wednesday. which you can submit drawings for. And maybe your drawing will be chosen as the winning design. Last week, Helen made an alien, a blobby alien with four eyes and an earth on his head, covered by a dome. And I think pretty soon, some images will be popping up on the social media about um, the finished piece for that. You know. All right, so Katie's got the color applied. She applied an overlay of color over a clear bubble, and she's going to start to inflate this. She's gonna go in, get a little bit more material. That concentrated color is just a thin layer of color, and now she needs more of the clear material to go over top. So she just gathered that up. She dripped a little bit of it off. We call that a strip gather. And that clear glass that she drips off and cuts off, that all can be recycled right back into the furnace and used again, because it's the clear glass that we have in our furnace. She'll shape this up with a wooden scoop tool called a block. And then into the oven to keep things nice and hot.
All right. So Katie is shaping this up. To make this tube out of glass, she's going to blow up a nice big bubble, and then she'll probably use heat and gravity to stretch out um, a long neck. All righty. So this aquamarine looks very orange, and that's just because it is so hot. So Katie is focused and ready to start the next piece. This piece will take probably the next 45 minutes or so. So she's got um, in store for you today, she's got another cane roll up. So for those of you who didn't get to see that, you'll get to see that again. She's going to pre-make this neck and put it away into the garage. First, she's going to open up the end of it because she is going to attach this to the top of this bottle. She wants to make sure that the, the neck is um, open on both ends. So she cools it, and then she'll tap off the end, which will leave a hole. There they go. When she goes into the oven, you'll see the small hole. And she'll start to open this right up. So she'll squeeze in a line right off the end. She'll open it up with the blades of the jacks. And when she cuts in this line, she doesn't squeeze it down all the way. So it will leave a small hole at the top when they break it free and attach it to the bottle. She's done blowing. So she removes the hose and then she'll probably open this up one more time and we'll put this into that garage which will keep it nice and warm. So for this piece, Katie's using those cooler tones, those blues and sort of uh, maybe a seafoam green color. She's going to pull the canes out of the oven. We've got the canes preheating in the oven. All right, so Helen warmed up the fork so that we don't crack the ceramic plate. Katie's going to go in. She grabs the plate, comes out. They'll carry it over. And they're going to start the fusing process where they start to fuse these rods of glass together. Look at those beautiful, cool blue tones in a beautiful pattern. She spent the last couple of weeks pulling all this cane. So she has lots of time invested in these projects or these pieces, even before we start this blowing process. So each color of those canes, so she's got those four colors in the cane, each one of those takes a good 45 or half an hour to pull those canes. And so. We're looking at a lot of work in these pieces.
Helen's going to start to heat them up to the point where they start to soften. Once they start to soften, they'll become very hot and sticky, and they'll start to squeeze these together. Katie is taking a reading of the length with a tool called a pie divider. So she takes a measurement of the length and the opposite side of that pi divider will give us the diameter of our post that she'll roll this up on. So if you're familiar with the number pi, it's the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter. So they measured the circumference. Divide that by 3.14, et cetera. That'll give you the diameter of the circumference. Oh, I, I was going to put it back on there. Oh, no. I took the tape off. This is going to put some new tape on it. One of our hoses has a hole in it. Are you done? Sorry about that, Katie. Who did it? Who did that? And I said, oh, shoot, I did that. And then I went to go do something else, and I forgot. One of our hoses has a little hole in it, and it was the duct tape was sliding off the hole, so I was going to replace it. And then I walked away, and then Katie came to use the hose, and there's a hole in it. So she's got the length of the circumference, which gives her the diameter of her collar. The collar is the little bit of glass on the end of the blowpipe that she's going to roll the canes up on. So that pie divider is a nice tool to use when rolling up cane. So they're making sure that these are all squeezed together. It's nice and soft. Helen said a quick flash and then are you ready to go? And Katie said, yep. So they go in for a quick overall reheat. And then watch how this rolls up. You'll see why we call this a cane roll up. So they're going to get one more heat on this, even it out. Flip it out. You can see how one side is glowing a little brighter than the rest. We want to make sure that the heat is really even. They'll brush it off to make sure that it's nice and clean. And when everything's just right, she's going to roll this up. Okay, she's checked with the pie divider again, and we're ready to go. <laughs> So we don't want it to be too hot. If it's too hot, it'll squish. We want it just to be just tacky and sticky. Watch this. This we call this a cane roll-up. Here we go. 
stick it on. She'll roll it right up. And look at that beautiful matches right up thanks to that pie divider. And she'll brush off any kiln wash that might be stuck to the canes. And a quick heat. And now she's going to start to pull them together. These will become, these stripes will become the wall of our vessel. So now that she's got those stuck together, she's going to roll them together and make sure it's nice and round. And then she'll close off the end. Bring all those canes together and close it off. And then this will become our bubble. Now she spent a little time opening up that collar. So the blow hose, the blow pipe, she can blow through that and inflate this bubble once she closes this off. So she's just going to squeeze those canes together with the blades of the jacks. Right now, she's just kind of letting the glass glide in between those blades, just making sure everything's really sealed together. If there's a tiny little hole and she closes this off, we still won't be able to inflate it because the air will escape through that tiny little hole. So we want to make sure it's really squeezed together and that everything is sealed right up. She can also use this metal table to do the same thing, sealing it up on the back, rolling those canes together. And this is really tricky. Um, you would think the hard part would be to twist them up. The harder part is to keep them running straight because you have to turn in both directions nice and even. So she'll use the blades of those jacks to kind of smooth everything out. And then eventually she's going to squeeze down the end to close it off. All right, so they're just, this is the 
this process of squeezing these together and making sure that there's no gaps and that it's all sealed together is pretty time consuming. So they're just going to keep doing this nice and slow. We don't want to do it too much. If she gets it too hot, it'll wiggle around. The, the stripes will start to shift. And so we want to make sure they stay nice and straight. So it's kind of like a slow and steady process. On the table there, you can see some of the pieces she's made in this style that have the beautiful canes at the bottom, the solid neck color. And that's what the end or final project uh, product will be when she makes this beautiful and calmo cane bottle. That wooden board catches right on fire. This glass is very hot. Doesn't quite look very hot, but once you start using those wooden tools, it is very, very hot. beginning the process of squeezing this down. We slowly kind of bring it down so that it doesn't wrinkle. And then the result of this is this beautiful little disc off the bottom, which you could throw away, but it is so beautiful. They're going to save it. So Helen caught it in a wooden board. They're going to fire polish the sharp edge from breaking it free and then get it into our slow cooling annealing oven. cool slowly overnight. This is one she made from this bottle. So you can see it's got that beautiful color pattern and how it's just a scrap part of the process, but it um, it's a nice, beautiful little object on its own. All right, so she's got that closed off. Now it is a sealed bubble. She's going to hook up that blow hose. This will allow her to inflate this bubble some more. She's going to go in for a quick reheat. And we have a question. Um, can we zoom in on these bottles here on the marver to get a closer look at the beautiful cane work? There we go, nice. So you can see, this is our this is Katie's veil cane. So you can see it's a wide stripe of color, and in between each cane there is a little bit of clear, which shows through in a little window. And so it's this beautiful um, wide stripe cane, which we call veil cane. So the way she made it is she made a cup of color, filled that with clear glass, pulled it so that when it flattens out. It creates this wide stripe instead of a small stripe in the center. Um, so another type of cane is called filigrana cane, where the color just runs in a thin line right down the center with clear, a lot of clear on either side.
So she's using this newspaper pad to shape and cool the glass. Stepping on that foot pedal to inflate this. And that newspaper is fresh. So it does smoke a lot. Helen was just blowing some of that smoke out of uh, Katie's face. So this is Katie Hub. She's been um, working with glass for about uh, eight years now. So she makes this whole process look very easy. She went to Emporia State. She has a Bachelor of Fine Arts concentrated in glass. Yeah, I would call that little bit she cut off the end a cutoff. A pretty cutoff. <laughs> I'm glad we saved them. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but they make nice yeah, cups Yeah, what are you going to do with them? Yeah. Put it on the bottom of a cup. Wow. There you go. Yeah. Make good bottoms to something. There's a glass artist, Yanush Pozniak, and he was on the show Blown Away, and he makes a lot of these cane pieces, and so he has a lot of these cutoffs, and I think um, he used some of them for a GoFundMe fundraiser as part of a, um, a gift to people who donated, or you know, some people make magnets out of them. Some people roll them up and use them as pattern work on another piece but it is just pure color and it's a really cool little um, piece of glass. And so it's nice to use them again. Katie, your mom wants them. <laughs> of course. <laughs> oh, I'll we'll see, won't we? You could use them in a mosaic. You could stick them in your plants. What else could you do with them? They're just really pretty objects. It's all good. I think of a glass story. Yeah. I used to make drawer pulls out of them, but it was pretty labor intensive. <laughs> Drill the hole, stick the glue the thing in, and then you got to build it out away from the drawer. And yeah. Okay. We're going to gather over this really soon. So we keep this under two hours. Make the size piece that she wants to make today. She does need some more glass. This is all very thin. And so she could make a small piece out of this, like something we could hold right in our hands. But she does want to make a vessel. So she's going to need yeah. more of the clear glass over top of this color work. And so she's going to let this cool off and then go back into the furnace and gather more glass on top of it. You can gather on a bubble as many times as you like, as long as you can work with that amount of material.
cooling it off. We also don't want to gather on a soft hot bubble. The bubble will collapse. She's going in for a free free heat. We also can't gather on a cold bubble. It'll blow up in the hot glass. So she's kind of evening out the temperatures, making sure that the outside is not too cold from cooling it off, making sure the inside is not too hot, that the bubble would collapse. The temperatures have to be just right. She goes in, gathers that glass up. They'll use a wooden, she'll use a wooden scoop tool called a block that's soaked in water to shape, center, and cool the glass. And then she can also use that newspaper pad to shape and cool the glass from the outside. Chris is helping her turn. Helen's being a great assistant by shielding her arm and blowing the smoke out of her face, which is really nice when we have this fresh newspaper pad. It can give off a little smoke until it builds up that carbon layer. She'll cool the tip of the bubble on this cold metal table called a marver. Right now, we're just, she's just kind of setting up the temperature differences. We want the bottom to remain a little thicker, and so we need to cool it off a little bit more than the rest of the piece so that um, it has a nice thick bottom so that it's nice and strong and stable. She'll cool the bottom of the newspaper. Some more as well. And then she's going to start to step on that foot pedal, which is going to introduce a very light pressure or a little bit of air into that bubble. Turning in both directions, making sure this is nice and even. Keeping those lines running nice and straight. That's really important when you work with cane is turning nice and even. She'll start to use these jacks to start to squeeze in a jack line, but also to cut in the little waist. So these vessels are sort of a gourd shape. It's got this nice contour or waist. And so she's going to start to squeeze in those lines right now. And then this line off the end of the blowpipe, that's where she'll break the glass free when it's time. We like to use the newspaper 
because we can get, um, it's really the only way we can shape the glass with our hands. Um, if you use the block, the wooden block, you get one shape, which is that Q-tip shape. The newspaper allows her to cool just the bottom. And it's nice and soft and gentle, so she can cool the glass and shape it with her hands. So she can actually even, if she wanted to, she could even kind of squeeze with her fingers. And so the newspaper just acts as a way to shape the glass with our hands and get some really beautiful shapes. And it's not as hard and rigid as some of the other tools. Softest tool to shape the hot glass compared to the hard metal, the hard wood, the metal table. Going for a quick reheat. Everything's got to be kept over a thousand degrees. If anything falls below a thousand degrees, it will crack and break. And so they're going to go in for these short reheats. And everything's going to happen pretty quickly at this point. They're going to flip this around, add the neck. She'll squeeze in that jack line. We want to make sure that that jack line is nice and tight. That's where she's going to break the glass free from the blowpipe. The smaller, the tighter that line is, the easier this will break free. You guys have any questions so far? No? So she's got about four colors there, so it makes this really beautiful color palette. I believe she does. Katie, you have an Etsy store online, right? It's in its beginning stages. I know she was working on it um, last month. But you can keep your eyes open for Katie's Etsy site, which is a handmade site which she sells some of her glass on. She'll be selling um, some pieces in the Corning Museum of Glass shops, um, I believe in the fall. That stuff will go out on display. Um, but yeah. Check out her Etsy site. I think this will maybe give her a little push to get that site up and going. But I know she was working on it and putting some pieces that she had made on it. She had some professional pictures taken. And so, yeah, definitely keep your eye on open for that. We all um, work and demonstrate here for the museum, but we all are our own independent artists and have... Uh, most of us have our own businesses, and so we um, can do that on the side as well. She be, uh, made started making these pieces last year when she was um, participating in a show or an exhibition at her alma mater. Emporia State or a gallery in the in that area. And so she made one of these pieces for the first time and now she's starting to make these pieces um, again. This fluffy torch is a nice torch to use if she wants to heat one particular spot. If you go into this reheating oven, everything gets hot. Everything gets soft and gooey. And if you want to just preheat or heat one specific area, you can use this fluffy torch beforehand and then go back into the heat. And that area is always going to be a little hotter.
she squeezes down that line some more just to define it. use this hotter torch to heat just a very small section on the bottom. So same kind of thing. Getting the glass to heat in just one specific area. This one is a much hotter torch. It's the torch they use in a flame working demonstration. We have one of those up in the innovations gallery today and I think they start their demonstration on the hour. So it's not on the schedule but they start on the hour. And you can catch one of those demonstrations where they make little intricate sculptures in a flame instead of out of a furnace. But she used that to heat just the very bottom to create um, a little flat spot. This will become the base of this bottle form. And so Chris is going to make a punty. A punty is just a little bit of glass on the end of a solid rod and it's going to act as a transfer Right, so they're going to transfer this off of the blowpipe onto that solid rod. Flip the whole thing around and work on the top of the opening. So he'll shape this up. And we're looking for sort of a Q-tip shape. And more importantly, the right temperature. We want it to be hot enough that it will stick, but cold enough that it will easily pop off when they're finished. Do you guys mind just going either to the, the seat above or the seat below? Thanks. So Chris has made the punty. He's going to cool the pipe off. These pipes do get hot, but we have this fancy little tool here called a pipe cooler. It cools off the metal, so they're just rolling it. He's just kind of cooling it in the cold water. He'll give it a little heat. There's a nice um, view. This has looked very orange so far, but now you can see it's at its colder state. It's that beautiful blue tones, those cool tones. And it's a gorgeous piece so far. All right, watch this. They're gonna stick it. She's gonna stick the punty right in the center of the foot. They'll run the two irons together, making sure everything stays lined up and centered. Look at that. X marks the spot. She'll cool off that constriction line she made earlier, and with a light tap, this should pop right off. A okay, couple drops of cold water, a very light tap. A big round of applause for a nice clean break. All right. Now, if you look up at the screen, you can see there's a small hole left behind. She's going to spend a little time heating that up, and then they're going to add the neck, and then this piece will be finished. So we're really, really close. These pieces take Katie about an hour, but she's got a lot of prep work already into these pieces. So she spent the last couple of weeks pulling all the beautiful canes. So all those lines of color that you see in this piece, I think she's got four different colors in this piece. She had to do a separate cane pull, which probably took a half hour or 45 minutes per cane pull just to make the color um, for the pattern. And so these are very um, time consuming pieces, but the end result is really, really beautiful and well worth it.
So right now she's heating up the top and she's waiting for the glass at the top to become hot and soft. And she'll know when this happens by the way it starts to move. She can feel it. She can also kind of see it. She comes out of the oven and see how it has that nice orange glow at the top? That is one thing we do look for. That does tell us that the glass is hot and soft. She's gonna pull and trim the lip. So she's right now she's pulling it. This is a technique we call pulling and trimming. And then she's gonna trim the lip with a set of shears. So watch this, she'll get in there and she'll cut through the glass just like it was paper. The glass has to be very hot, very soft in order, this, order for her to cut through this like that. So um, the, sensation, the sensation would be kind of like cutting through wet cardboard or an orange peel with scissors, but her fingertips were so close to the hot glass that they probably got warm as well. So it's kind of spongy or like cutting through taffy or something. So she's going to heat this up, soften that cut edge, and use the newspaper to close this down a little bit. See how she can really squeeze the glass with her hands? That's one reason we do like that newspaper. She's going to puff up the top with a tool called a Sofietta. Round out the top a little bit. So even after the glass has been removed from the blowpipe, we can still inflate the glass a little bit. So they're really close to adding the, um, the solid tube and Calmo piece for the neck. And so Chris is warming that up. It's been in a garage or an oven we call a garage, keeping it nice and warm. This whole time, she, it was the first thing she made. And so we kept it in an oven around 1,000 degrees just to keep it nice and hot. So she's heating this up. They're going to stick these two together, and we want to make sure that the two pieces that they're sticking together are nice and hot. Glass only sticks to other things that are hot. So Chris is heating the end of the tube up over here. Katie is, you can see she's got that nice orange glow. It looks like she's going to pull and trim the lip again. making it a little smaller. This time, instead of cutting the glass, she's going to constrict it down with the blades of those jacks and then tap off 
the little ruffled part at the end. So there is a few ways to do this, and if you need it to become the hole to become a little smaller, this is probably the best way to do it. So she'll squeeze that down. Helen's sticking a set of tweezers in there to kind of cool and make sure she doesn't close off the hole. And now they're going to break that little bit off the top. Okay, watch this. She cools it. Helen will give it a light tap. And it pops right off. There we go. She said one more puff, and then they're going to stick on the neck. So she's heating the top, waiting for that to soften. You can see it has that little bit of a glow to it, and that's one thing we do look for. She's going to use the Sofietta. Watch this, puffing it up. It rounds it out. Gives her that beautiful shape up at the top. All right, so she said she's ready, so she's communicating with Chris. Chris is going to start to heat the edge of the tube, and they're going to stick the two together. This is a process we call Encalmo. Okay, they're gonna stick it together this time. So she's got the top of that nice and hot. Chris will bring over the tube. So it's glowing a little bit. And here we go, it's a one shot deal. Sticks it on and nails it right on center. How about a big round of applause? She nails it every time. Do you play darts, Katie? Do you play darts? No. No? <laughs> no? <laughs> Maybe you should start. Join a league. All right. So there is the beautiful neck of the bottle. I think the neck of the bottle for this one is an aquamarine. Huh? What's that? An aquamarine? It is, yeah. It's a little lighter than that one. That one's cool. pretty dark. So beautiful. It's a little less color. But it should bring the blues out a lot, I think, and that's why I chose pink for the top of the other one, and that'll bring some of those pinks out a bit more. Going with the theme here. All right, so they got a little color in it, a little bit of movement. They're going to open this up into a nice cylinder. So she goes in with the blades of the jacks. Mm -hmm. Slowly starts to open it up. Chris is shielding her arm. Eventually he might hold the paddle on the lip of the piece to make sure that the lip stays nice and straight. I'll take it here for a sec. Big old line in it. She'll preheat the edge with this small hand torch. This will make sure that the lip gets a little extra heat. Okay. And then, of course, adding a little heat to that punty so that it doesn't get too cold. Amanda's taking a couple shots that she'll put on the uh, social media so we can get some previews of this piece because this is going into a slow cooling oven where it will stay for the next 16 hours or so. So we won't be able to see this for a day or so until it's slowly cooled overnight. That's the hardest part, I think, is waiting to see the piece you made 
the day before or two days before. So she's just opening that up. Chris will use a little board on the edge. Make sure it stays nice and straight. So they're going to trim the lip here, make sure it's nice and even. So they'll use those shears again to cut through the hot glass. It's really, the process of trimming is not easy, but cutting through the hot glass is kind of easy. It's kind of spongy and gooey. So she gets in there and cuts. She works really quickly because the glass cools so quickly. Quick overall heat, then they'll concentrate a little heat just on the lip. She'll open this up. Chris will use a board, and then this piece is very close to being finished. Couple quick flashes to even out the temperatures. She's gonna build up a little heat in the bottom of the piece. And then she'll remove it from that punty. Yeah, that'll be all. That'll be it. And we've got two beautiful bottles from Katie Hubbs Bring the Heat live stream demonstration. Just adding a little heat so that when they break this off, it pops right off. But that was a beautiful demonstration. A lot of hard work into these pieces and a beautiful job. As we get ready to take this off the pipe, I'd like to thank you for coming into the museum today and checking out this demonstration. For those of you who are tuning in at home, thanks for tuning in at home. We'll catch you next Wednesday for our next live stream from 10 to 12, and that's going to be a You Design It, We Make It. Here we go. Quick flash, and then all they'll have to do is add a few drops of cold water, and with the lightest tap, this will pop right off. She drops the pipe down below so that the piece is high in the air. The water will fall back towards the punty and not the piece. Chris is ready to catch it if it does pop off early. Light tap, look how easily that pops off. They'll fire polish the sharp edge. Hot glass does break like cold glass. And Chris will get this into our slow cooling oven. 
to cool slowly overnight. So into the oven. A beautiful cane bottle with an Encolmo necklace. Katie Hubbs, how about a huge round of applause for a great demo and a beautiful piece. Chris Rochelle, Helen Tegler as assistants and everyone else that helped make this live stream possible. Thanks for joining us.